think people are just really taken so much with the movie and just they just love it so much. And especially Rob, I mean, the movies you've got in particular have been just great. So that's got to be a good feeling for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, annoyingly, you always just tend to seek out the bad ones anyway. Because I mean, your one obviously will stay in my heart <laughs> for the rest of my life. <laughs> Yeah, um, but that's great. It's kind of, but you just, you know, it, it, it's more about the experience. I mean, uh, the experience, and also just when you see something on the page, which you love so much right from the beginning, I think most of the time you're just thinking, I just don't want to mess it up. And so when you can watch the movie and you feel like you kind of have totally messed it up, but <laughs> that's about what I'm trying to aim for. <laughs> like, and the rest of it's just the bonus. Well, I'd like to open questions up to the audience. If you got a question, please raise your hand. And sir, you, the blue shirt, yeah. Nice and loud, please. The inspiration for the score and the music. It was very eclectic. Uh, yeah, we have. Um, it was, I, you know, I, when I'm writing especially, I start building playlists. Um, just I, I can't write with music playing, but I just, it's just you know over however many months that I'm writing, I'm just constantly thinking about the world of the movie that I'm inventing, and we'll just be building playlists, and those playlists get really long, and sometimes they even involve me diving down, like I go down sort of seven hour iTunes rabbit holes, you know, you know. <laughs> You know, listeners who bought this also like this. And, you know, <laughs> you follow that for like seven hours, you get to some pretty interesting places. And, and in the course of that, I discovered some people that I really, really loved. You know, like uh, like Colin Stetson, who does all of that strange saxophone stuff in there, or William Brzezinski, who's this beautiful pianist composer who does these kind of long uh, piano loops that sort of fall apart. And then you know, compositions by Dianne Giacinto Celsi, just there's this is beautiful string stuff, but principally that just you know feels like metal grating against metal. And what I did find was that you know because it's setting a movie that's a few decades in the future, I didn't want to have to try and make the soundtrack futuristic. I wanted to. I actually really loved the idea of taking very traditional instruments, but ones that were being performed in very unusual ways. And uh, um, and yeah, that seemed to do the trick. And then my, and then Anthony Partos, who I worked with on Animal Kingdom, just sort of gave me some of the connecting tissue. Who's got a question? You, young lady. Nice to laugh. Interesting, interesting. question was, did Ray sort of become Eric's lost puppy in a way, right? Right, okay, you have to, wow, you really ran into this. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a perfectly reasonable reading. Good, good call. Here, here's what I said. I interviewed these uh, gentlemen this afternoon. I said, wait a minute, so I get why it's called the Rover, but is it also be called, called the Rover because Rover is a common dog name? And they're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I thought I was onto something here. <laughs> Who else has a question? Uh, yes, you, Bond. How difficult was it for you, Rob, to have a southern accent? What did you do to prepare? Not entirely sure what accent I'm doing. <laughs> and also, I was surrounded by a bunch of Australians, so no one could tell anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it was kind of on the, it was, it was some pages. It was a fun. The southern accents are fun, I mean, you know, you kind of, especially when you add little quirks to it and stuff. Uh, but yeah, when Scoot turned up, I was terrified. He was just going to be 
What is that? <laughs> Who's next? You, young lady. What was your favorite scene to shoot and why? Uh, for me, it's, you know, it's kind of, as, this is really boring, but for me, it's like, you know, that the long campfire scene. I mean, that's from, that for me is the thrill of, the thrill of making movies, it's just having kind of created two characters and then you get great actors to bring them to life and then you're on and then you have that 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 long night where we just made it work you know that that for me is thrilling that's the just you know massaging performances and and you know watching a thing that has been in gestation for a long time finally come into being who is next you sir nice and loud kind of preparation you did for the, some of the long shots that just stayed on the characters for a while. Yeah, I mean, you always allow yourself wiggle room. You always should shoot more than you need. I mean, it was always very important to me that those couple of opening shots be long. A, because I wanted to get a sense of the, um, the, the uh, you know, kind of guy's strange stagnation. You know, the, the, the what's that word? No. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> You know that whatever that this is, you know that that, that his atrophy or whatever that this man had, you know, it's, he just he could barely he could barely find reason to move anymore. I also to pre pre prepare the. I knew I was, I'm about to give the audience a big car chase. I want to prepare them at the outset. I want them to know that that's not going to be. This isn't going to be a car chase movie. And once that car chase is out of the way, it's going to slow right down. Actually, I, I, I have a question about. So if you film this like way out in the boonies of the Australian, Australian outback. And okay, so you film during the day, it's hot. Okay, night, you lose the light. You shot there two months. What you guys do at night? <laughs> uh, just looking at stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned today yeah, that you saw I mean, that just looking up in the sky was a big deal. Yeah, there's no other thing. It's, it's, it's not, I mean, you're so far from the city lights. I totally forgot as well, there's, I didn't get to do this, um, but our armorer um, had night vision goggles.